If you're brand new to Football Manager for FM22, the game can be daunting to say the, to say the least. I've previously made a video showing you how to set up a new game so that it runs nicely on your computer and you don't make any really obvious mistakes right at the start. But that then leaves you day one of your new job and there's lots to do. In this video, I'm going to take you through your first seven days in your new job, just showing you how to set everything up so ideally you don't get sacked in the first month. Hello folks and welcome to your first week in your FM22 manager's job. What a catchy title. If that catchy title feels like it's worth a reward for the effort that obviously went into coming up with it, please make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video. This is kind of experimental content for me. And if you want to see more of the tutorial guide kind of stuff here on the channel, it needs supporting. So make sure you like it. Big thumbs ups on there. Let me know in the comments what you'd change about it, that kind of thing. It's all helpful. And of course, if you are new, because probably you're new to the game if you're watching this video, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. I make daily Football Manager videos. I've got a Let's Play going on at the moment with Arsenal as part of the FM22 beta. I stream regularly on Twitch, and there's probably, almost certainly, going to be lots more guide content coming up as well. I've bought a logo for it and everything now. I have to keep making the videos. Uh, but we are picking things up in this video where we left them off in the beginner's guide video that I made earlier in the week where we just basically set up a new game. So we're the manager of Peterborough United in the championship and the game is saved. We've been imported into the job and this is where we find ourselves. You load it up and you have these inbox messages and we are just going to go through to the 12th of July, just showing everything that I do to set the game up so that it's not quite as daunting as it can be otherwise. And the first thing to do is read the emails. This The inbox is your friend. I forgot that avatar is set up, goodness me. Uh, but you want to be reading pretty much everything that comes in. You don't have to read every word of it. Like, I don't need to read every word of every message that comes in. But it does give you a hint as to the kind of stuff that you should be working on. So the first thing we're presented with is players that are in the last year of their contract. And it very handily sorts them um, or shows you their ability and their current ability. And this is crucial because if you've got players who are amongst your best players who are out of contract at the end of the season, you want to sort them out with a contract sooner rather than later. So I would always sort this firstly by ability and then second by potential ability to make sure our best players are tied down to longer contracts. And the obvious one um, that sticks out here is Sariki Dembele at Peterborough, out of contract at the end of the year with four-star current ability four and a half star potential ability at 24 years old. If we let that contract run down, he can leave for free at the end of the season. Um, and as you can see, he's got a pretty solid transfer value. Now, I don't think he's going to agree to a new contract because he wants to leave. However, we've got this recommendation here that he does have a one year contract extension. So first thing we're going to do is trigger his contract extension. As you then go through everybody else, you do have these recommendations that you get from your backroom team. And more often than not, you can probably follow the recommendations. And I am going to just leave everyone else with their contracts expiring for now. But I am going to keep an eye on Christy Pym and Mark Beavers. They've both got three-star current ability, which is probably going, mean, probably going to lead to them being fairly solid regular starters for the team. And if they're still performing well when it gets to January and Bosman o'clock, then we might decide to give them a new contract then. And we will get another version of this in our inbox at that point. But for now, we've renewed one contract. We move on to the next thing, which is the tactics induction. There are loads of these induction um, tutorial things that come through to your inbox and they're scheduled to come out when they become relevant over the course of your first few weeks and even up to the first couple of months in the job now because the Data Hub tutorial doesn't come in until you've played three league games. So that'll be getting on towards September by the time that tutorial comes in. Do not skip these. If you're new to the game, do not skip them because they give you really crucial information that you need to know to be able to understand the different elements of the game. Now, I've obviously been playing the game for many, many years. I theoretically understand how the tactic system in the game works. So I don't need to go through and do all of the tut tutorials. We'll click on this one just to show you how they function, um, but I won't be going through all of them. So go through these 
at your own pace. But with the Tactic Creator one, you can do it through the tutorial, which is how you should be doing it if you're new. You can also just click straight on the Tactics tab and do it yourself. And But you're then brought to this screen where you can decide what your tactical style is going to be. The game, again, guides you in the right direction with these thumbs ups next to tactics that the game thinks will match the your players that you've got. And it gives you a little idea of how each of these systems works. I would suggest as a new player, you follow the thumbs up. Um, as a rough rule of thumb, um, did I remind you to leave a thumbs up on the video? As a rough rule of thumb, the better your players in comparison to the rest of the league, the higher up this list they're going to be and the more um, attacking, expansive, creative systems you're going to be able to play. Um, but you're not going to be able to set up playing like Barcelona if you're a relegation threatened team in the championship like Peterborough are. Um, so it's recommending for us a route one, a fluid counter-attacking system or a direct counter-attacking system. It goes against all my sensibilities to play route one. So I'm ruling that one out straight away, even though it might be quite effective for us. I know this Peterborough squad, for example, has a big target man up front in Johnson Clark Harris. that would probably work quite well with a route one system. I won't do it. So we're kind of choosing between the two counter-attacking systems. And like I say, it gives you an idea of how they differ. So they both soak up pressure. The fluid one is more expressive with fluid counterattacks, um, and the direct one has direct and structured counterattacks. So basically, with the fluid one, your players are given a little bit more freedom to maybe dribble a little bit or try a fancier pass, whereas with the direct one, it's very much get the ball forward to the strikers or out wide to the, to the wingers, get the ball forward quickly and do it the way I want you to do it. So... Um, you can choose between either of these. gives you a little bit more information of how each of them works. There. So this is an example of the fluid counter-attacking in action, and you can see it comprises short passing, running at defences, um, whereas the direct one, more direct passing, playing for set pieces, higher tempos. They're different styles of play, and you can get an example of how each of them works. So with the direct one, um, you lots of players behind the ball, but then once you get the ball, you play it forward quickly, get it out wide, get it crossed in. Whereas with the fluid one, it's played out to a midfield playmaker who then runs with the ball for a bit and looks to slot a through ball forward to the striker. And I, I mean, I quite like the look of that one, I think. I think despite the fact we've got a target man and logic would dictate probably doing that one and just getting the ball up to him, um, I, I, I just like pretty football. So we're going to go with a fluid counter-attacking system so we're then going to hit choose formation. And again, it then gives you a guide as to which formations that are suited to this tactic um, would best suit your players. So you can choose whichever one of these you want. You can also choose any other formation. You don't have to stick to one of the preset formations, but the game does kind of guide you towards formations that suit certain tactical styles. Um, for me, I kind of have a pet peeve about five at the back systems. I don't really like them, even though it will let you experiment with the new wide centre-backs uh, that is in the game this year. And so that leaves us with a 4-4-1-1 or a 4-3-3. Now, again, using my knowledge of the players that we've got, again, this is why it's helpful to um, manage a team early on where you know the squad quite well. I know we've got a very good winger in Siriki Dembele that we were talking about before. We also have a very good attacking midfielder in Sammy Smodix. And they're kind of not both... You're not going to be able to fit both of them into either of these systems. It's kind of forcing us into sacrificing one of our better, more creative players. So probably we're going to want to have both of these trained. But I think initially we go with this one and we make a mental note that we need to get Sammy Smodic's training to either play out wide or up front or maybe a little bit deeper in central midfield because he's not going to be in there in his preferred shadow striker role. Um, but we'll pick the 4-3-3. Three, three. We'll confirm that. And there we have a 4-3-3 tactic set up, ready to go. You can then tweak any of this stuff that you want to tweak. Early on, when you're new to the game, I wouldn't recommend tweaking it. I'd just leave everything as it is. Um, but as you start to watch more games, play your friendlies, get an idea of what your team's good at, what it might be struggling with, you can then start tweaking with this stuff as and when you see fit. And with all of them, if you hover over them, you get a little tooltip that explains what that change will do. What I would recommend is that you don't overload this with loads of instructions. You can see there's a lot of things that aren't selected on here at the moment. Um, in Like you don't have to have something selected in every section like that. You don't have to get everything so it's either red or green. 
Um, you can just leave them unselected. And I would recommend more often than not, you want to have minimal instructions. If you give your players three or four things to focus on, they'll probably be okay. If you give them 11 instructions to focus on, they'll start cancelling each other out. They'll start getting confused. So I would look to minimize the changes that you make. Don't change five things in one go. If you watch half a dozen games and see that your team's not actually very good at running at the defense, you can take run at defense off. Or you can go back to the drawing board and add and change to a direct counter-attacking system because running at defense is kind of a key part of the fluid counter-attack anyway. But you've got your tactic there. Once you've got your tactic, um, you can then hit selection advice and get an idea of who your first 11 is. And that's where we get the example that Sammy Smodix, even though he's one of our better players, doesn't really fit in anywhere in that system. He's a bit awkward. He's unconvincing or competent at all these other roles. So we probably need to give get him training at doing something else. I don't know. We can make him... Um, let's tell him he needs to train to be a pressing forward because that's where he's going to be playing if he's in the team. For example, um, you then go back to the inbox, always back to the inbox. If you've got unread inbox stuff, you want to be getting back to that inbox regularly because it does guide you through how to play the game. Um, and this gives us our club vision and expectations. And this will should give you a, a guide of how you're going to go about managing the team. So um, your club culture at this club, this will vary from club to club at this club, the club culture is to play possession and attacking football. Well, we're not really doing that, but we're also trying to stay in the league. So you got to decide whether or not you're going to agree with all of this stuff or not. Um, if it's desired, then um, then it's more important than preferred. If it's required, like the required one is working within the wage budget. So we have to work within the wage budget and stay in the championship this year. They'd prefer us to play possession football, but I think if we hit the required stuff, we're all right. But this is basically guiding us towards trying to sign young players that we can then sell on at a profit, working within our budget, and try and do it playing attract attractive football while staying in the league. They're not asking for much. Yikes. Um, Pre-season preparation. Um, this is just sending you on your training camp stuff. You can see we've got a training camp. You could cancel if you wanted. Um, you can fiddle with your um, training schedules and things if you want at this stage. Again, if you knew, I wouldn't. That's kind of an advanced thing that you'll fiddle with in the future. For now, I'd leave this screen well alone unless you maybe want to add an extra friendly or two. You can get a summary of who's injured, which is useful um, to get an idea of... Uh, so this is telling you who's got recurring injuries. So there's no one actually currently injured, but be aware that George Grant and Jack Marriott both have potential recurring injuries that could cause problems. Squad selection rules is important to familiarise yourself with. So in the championship, we have to have eight players uh, trained in England before their 21st birthday. So you can't just go out and sign a load of foreign players and get rid of all the English players. You have to keep a minimum of eight homegrown players. And then it's press conference time, but I've already declined to do that. I don't remember pressing that button. But obviously, I did. And the last thing I want to do on this page, or in fact, there's a couple of things I want to do before hitting continue for the first time. Um, as a new player, I would always go into the staff tab and go into responsibilities. And I've had a few people ask how you can make the game um, more like FM Touch, the previous kind of uh, lighter version of the game that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but doesn't involve quite so much micromanagement and button clicking. Um, and you can do that in here. And as a new player, I would recommend delegating a lot to your staff and maybe learning one new skill at a time. So you can go through these staff responsibilities things and just delegate stuff off to other members of staff. So I think you probably want to pick your own team, but maybe you don't want to be doing um, staff recruitment at the moment. So you can set all of your staff recruitment to be done by the recommended member of staff, which in this case is our director of football. But by setting that all to the recommended member of staff, that means you don't have to worry about recruiting your own staff anymore. Someone else is going to do that for you. Likewise, contract renewals for staff. You can set all that to be done automatically by the game or but done by another member of staff within your club. So now staff isn't something you need to worry about. You can still go in and do that, you can still hire and fire your own staff if you want to, or you might decide that after a little while, okay, I want to hire and fire my own assistant manager. Um, so you could then go in there and where would it be? In here somewhere. Um, 
uh, coaching staff. So you take control of doing your own coaching staff. So someone else does all of everything else, but you'll you'll arrange your own coaches or you'll be the one who hires and fires the director of football. And you can take control of that as you go into the game. But I would suggest at the start, delegate loads of stuff to your backroom staff while you're learning other things. So at the, at the start of the game, you have to learn tactics. You have to be able to do tactics. So don't worry necessarily so much about scouting early on. Um, transfers, I mean, we all like to play around with transfers. We're probably going to want to be in control of our own transfers. But maybe we want someone else to sort out our loans for our young players. Maybe you're not interested in transfers at all and you just want to do tactics and coaching. Well, believe it or not, you can just delegate transfers to be done by the club as well. Um, you don't have to hire and fire and sign and sell your own players. I like that's my favorite bit of the game. I'm obviously leaving that in. Media stuff, I find press conferences boring, so I'm going to delegate those, but you can do them if you want to. Uh, training, again, training is quite complex. If you're learning tactics and transfers at the start of the game, maybe don't try and learn training at the same time. Maybe for your first season, delegate training to your assistant manager. Keep an eye on what they're doing, maybe. Try and learn from them as you go, but maybe not try and learn everything in one go. But two or three seasons down the line, when you've got a tactic that works, you've got a good recruitment policy that's bringing good young players in, and but for some reason they're not quite developing the way you want them to, that's when you can go, right, I'm going to take over my training now and I'm going to learn how to do training to best develop my young players. And then you can step in and learn that. And you don't have to learn everything all in one go at the start of the game. Um, likewise, tactics. I don't want to do my own opposition instructions. Um, and on match days, I don't want to manage... I mean, I would recommend you manage your own friendlies initially. Um, but for the purposes of this, so I don't have to show you a friendly in the video. Um, I'll get my assistant manager doing it. I would recommend if you're a new player, play your friendlies. It'll give you an idea of how tactics and things work. You can experiment in your friendlies a little bit. You don't even have to do your own team talks. You can delegate that if you want to. But we've delegated a lot of stuff to our backroom staff. So that's immediately a whole load of stuff that we now don't have to do that we can decide to start doing later on if we want to. And then we're going to have a look at our squad. You can see I've got a custom squad view on here. When you load the game up for the first time, it will look like that. It's not very useful. What you will be able to do once the Steam Workshop is up and running is go onto the Steam Workshop, search for the Lelujo view, which is my custom view that I use, um, and it will set this page up like this, which is much more useful. Gives you an idea of the ability of the players, the kind of contracts they're on, tracks their statistics over the season. It's just a much more useful setup. So that'll be available on the Steam Workshop on the launch of the full game. So you'll be able to get that set up as well. But what I like to do from this screen is just sort my team according to ability and get an idea who my best players are. So you can see that my best players, Jack Taylor in midfield, Sariki Dembele on the wing, Sammy Smodix that we talked about before, uh, Frankie Kent, George Grant, Jack Marriott, and then probably down to Norburn and Thompson and even Johnson Clark Harris. These are your three and a half star and above players. They're the players you want to kind of be focusing your team around. And looking at that, I mean, it kind of suggests we should probably be looking at a 4-2-3-1 rather than a 4-3-3. We don't really have a holding midfielder. We have got an attacking midfielder and a couple of good wingers, though. So maybe we need to rethink our tactic. So you can go back into the tactics, rethink your tactic. You can actually have three tactics loaded on here um, that will all be trained. And this tactical familiarity bar, as your tactics are trained, starts to fill up. And the higher that familiarity bar is, the better the players will be at implementing that tactic. So you kind of want three plans on here at any one time. So we've got our counter-attack because the game tells us it's going to be the most, the most appropriate one for our squad. But we want something that's going to get our three attacking midfielders in as well. Maybe we can do some kind of wing play system. Um, we can then go and pick out a 4-2-3-1 wide and have this in here as well. So now we can have a striker, our two wingers that are good, and a attacking midfielder in there and get the ball out wide on the wings. And we can train that one as well. And then you can add in a third tactic and so on. And then the other thing that you can do from that squad view is get an idea of where you might have weaknesses in your squad. So looking through there straight away, I'm not noticing a left back, for example. We might need a left back. If you want to confirm that even further, you can click on the squad depth tab, which will give you an idea of what your positional depth is for each position that you've got. And you can see that, yeah, actually left back is pretty weak. We've only got two 
one of them's only two and a half stars, maybe we need a left back. Um, and that's when you can then go into your scout, your scouted players and start looking at who you might want to bring in in that position. So you could search for left backs, for example. Transfers is a whole separate thing that I'll cover in a separate video at some point. But that gives you an idea of a starting point for your transfers. That's a lot of day one admin. We're going to hit continue. We are going to get through to the 12th, like I say, and just pick up on any of this stuff that comes up. Your weekly staff meetings, I would absolutely do them. Um, certainly early on, you might get to the stage when you're uh, months down in the game where you kind of feel like you don't need them anymore. But initially, rely on your staff a lot. They are helpful. For example, they're recommending who our most appropriate captain is. Do you know how to pick a captain? I don't really. I'll go with what my with my what my backroom staff say. It's recommending that we offer contracts to these young players. We haven't even noticed young players yet. Yeah, we'll offer contracts to them. And so that's two useful things that we've now done because we went to the staff meeting. So the staff meeting, super important. So we'll just offer these contracts. Obviously, you, you'd negotiate these a little bit rather than just offering them exactly what they ask for. But we're trying to hurry this along for the purposes of the video. We're still on the 5th of July. This is still our first day of the save. Um, but we're now going to hit continue a couple more times and just get into the habit of constantly going back to that inbox. So we're getting a summary of who our homegrown players are. Remember, we need eight of these in the squad at any one time. So it's important to keep track of who these homegrown players are. And um, Code of conduct is basically your system of punishments that you'll put in place for your naughty, naughty boys. I would just recommend you ask your assistant manager to pick. At the bottom there, you have ask assistant manager to pick. You can click on that, click confirm, and it's just done for you. I've never done anything other than that, and it's never caused a problem. I don't think you need to fiddle too much with the code of conduct. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong down in the comments section. You then get another tutorial telling you all about squad dynamics. It's a whole extra tab we've not even touched yet. And it's basically to do with the morale um, of the team, morale, motivation, that kind of thing. It is super important. Very much recommend you do the tutorial. You introduce yourself to the squad. You go through all that stuff. I'm not going to because I don't think there's much benefit in the video of me going through every tutorial. But if you are new, this stuff is crucial. Up until about three years ago, there were no tutorials in the game. They exist now. Use them. They're great. And then you get your injury summary through again. Um, I've got to introduce myself to the squad apparently. So let's introduce myself to the squad um, hi boys, how are you doing? Um, I don't really have very much to say to you. We're going to try and avoid relegation. You want the players to be satisfied or pleased. So don't be too unrealistic with the expectations. If I'd have said to them then, we want to win the championship, they'd all be furious because they know that's not realistic. So you have to try and be realistic. Um, we're going to give a good account of ourselves in the FA Cup and the code of conduct exists as well. There you go. We've done our meeting and it gives you a little summary of how the meeting went. You can see with that meeting, we've improved the morale of quite a lot of these players. Some of them were a little bit glum. A lot of them now have cheered up a little bit. So that was a successful meeting. So you want to try and make sure that you you have good meetings more often than you have bad meetings and do the induction as well while you're there. But for us, we're going to hit continue. I didn't hit that inbox there. Bad Kev because I've then missed out on the training induction. I know I said, don't worry yourself too much about training at the start. And I know some of you will ignore me. Either way, you should do the training induction because training is complicated, but it is important. You can just leave it to your assistant manager throughout the entire game and you'll be fine, but you won't be getting the absolute best out of your player development and your squad. So if you want to absolutely maximize everything, you have to do training yourself. And this is a good starting point to get you up and running with doing that. But like I say, if you are completely new, I would probably leave that automated for now because it's just going to be too much in one go if you try and learn everything at one time. You can go back and do these inductions at any point if you want to redo it two seasons down the line when you decide to look into training for the first time. Summary of the financial fair play regulations. Confirmation we're going to have that friendly. This is where if you were playing through this, I would recommend you're managing your own friendlies because now you get an opportunity to manage your first team against your second team and really start to experiment and get an idea of how tactics work. Watch it on extended highlights. Get an idea of how your players are playing. Are they doing what you'd want them to do? If they're not, you can then go into the tactics and tweak things a little bit like we were talking about before. Um, so very much would, uh, would manage that yourself if you are completely new. For us, 
conscious of the fact that this is already a very long video, so we're not going to watch the match. Um, you can see it did happen, though, and we won 3-0. Huzzah, yay for us. We're going to keep hitting continue. Um, we've got another inbox message. This just giving us the data hub stuff off the back of the match that's just happened. So this is important to look at. This will help you manage how your tactic is going to work is you're starting to get key insights out of this. So this pass map is particularly useful for getting an idea of whether your players are playing the way you want them to. I mean, for example, you can see there, we've got five players completely crowded on top of each other down this left-hand side. So do we now want to focus our play down the left? Because it's clearly where our players tend to end up anyway. Do we want to do the opposite and try and force them to go over there? Do we want to change the shape of the tactic? You can you can start to get insights off the back of looking at this stuff. So I would be looking at it and starting to draw conclusions. If you're not sure what conclusions to draw, it usually gives you a little bit of a summary at the side there. It's not particularly insightful in that situation, uh, but sometimes if something really stands out and you don't necessarily see it because you're new, it will point you towards what you should be noticing really handy we've then got our scouting induction again make sure you do it um, and match preparation stuff and then we hit continue once again and we keep moving through um i don't don't know in our first week if we're going to get our first recruitment meeting um but there you go we've got our transfers induction now so you've had the scouting induction you've now got the transfers induction so you can start making transfers it's recommending someone to sign there their value is £12 million. We're not going to be able to sign them because we don't have £12 million. But you get the idea. It will take you through how to do transfers. And remember, we're looking for a left-back. So we could, combination of those scouting tutorials and the transfer tutorials, we could go and find a left-back. We then have another match coming up. We're playing another friendly against Sevilla. Hopefully, a couple of days before each match, you'll get an email like this suggesting a team for you to play. If you hit Use Suggested Squad... It then selects that team for you in your match selection squad. So you've got a starting point to work with. You're not always going to want to stick with what the selection advice is, but it does give you a nice starting point. I always click on it just because it is useful to get the starting point and then you can kind of tweak from there. So take advantage of the stuff that comes through the inbox. Those two boys we offered contracts to before have now signed them. And then you get the training summary for the week, which will make a lot more sense to you if you've done the training induction, like I told you to. Um, but it does helpfully highlight who's trained particularly well, who hasn't. So we've got nobody on the training badly list. Um, but Ronnie Edwards is training very well. He's only 18. He's someone we might want to keep an eye on because he's obviously training very well. As you get a little bit deeper in, you'll have the option to praise the players who, play, who train well and criticise the ones who don't. And that can help with... Uh, managing morale, motivation, determination, all these crucial things. We've also got other teams at the club, as well as the first team. You've got, I think we've got an under 23 and an under 18 at this club. You go to the development centre, it will tell you what other teams you've got. And it also tells us that Kyle Barker might be worth promoting to the first team. But you can see we've got an under 23 squad that has its own set of fixtures and training and all that kind of stuff. And under 18s, you can completely leave those to be managed by their managers. If you go on to um, the responsibilities page, I think it's in the match one, yeah. So all the under-23 match day stuff is managed by the respective managers. Likewise with training. We've got all them, so they're basically self-sufficient. You can have full control of all your squads if you want to, but the reason I'm showing you that now is because we've just had an inbox message telling us there's an under-18s friendly. It's telling you the team that they're planning to play, but... You have the option to send some first team players down there if you want to. Um, so you can select the first team players individually that you want to make available for the under 18s, or you can just make them all available. You can decide how long they're available for. You can make them available until they're match fit. So it's pre season, nobody's match fit. So at the moment, maybe I'll send first team players down to the under 18s to do 45 minutes just for some match fitness. And all of a sudden, we've populated the team with first teamers, and then there's bench players who'll come on at half time and you're getting all, your entire first team squad have run out for the under 18s why not um backroom staff is another induction you want to be familiar with your backroom staff because we've already said we're going to be relying on them a lot um and then you have your pre-recruitment meeting advice so this is that contract stuff again that hasn't really changed from the last time we saw it i don't really know why we get it twice in the first week um, and then we have our recruitment meeting and this is crucial for helping you decide what signings 
you want to bring in. We already know in our mind we probably want a left back. Do the powers that be at the football club agree? So from here, it confirms what your club vision is when it comes to transfers and how much money you've got to spend, and then you can get in. Um, the club think we need a goalkeeper and a centre-back. We think we need a left-back, so we can actually add that to the meeting. So they're bringing goalkeeper and defender as um, as the action points for the meeting, because if you remember, these are the two players who are out of contract at the end of the season. That's why they've brought them up. But I want a left-back, so we can click left-back, click add, and we'll also discuss left-backs at this meeting as well. So that's why you want a rough idea of what you want, before the meeting starts, and then you can get the meeting up and running. It summarises for each position you're focusing on, it summarises who you've got. So we know we've got three goalkeepers, none of them great. And then it recommends some goalkeepers that you might want to look at. So you can then decide whether you scout them, talk to their agent, offer them a trial, or just ignore them. You can say you're not interested, just acknowledge that they exist. More often than not, I'll just click to scout them. Um, and then it also sets up a scouting focus, which you'll know all about if you've done the scouting induction, which you definitely did, didn't you? Um, and you can then set up um, a scouting focus for the next month or longer. You can set it up for however long you want to set it up for. Um, decide what priority your this scouting focus is going to be. So if you want goalkeepers to be your top priority for the next three months, you can absolutely um, tell it to do that. Okay, we can't because we don't have enough scouts. But normally you'd be able to change priorities and um, you could say I want a sweeper keeper um, I want a sweeper keeper who's a good shot stopper I want them to have a current ability of at least three and a half um, and a potential ability of four um, I want them to be available now or yeah available now or not available yet or just show me everybody whether they're available or not And I want my goalkeeper to be no older than 27 you've now got that as a scouting focus, so your scouts are going to go out and look for players that fit this criteria. Very handy stuff. Um, and then you go through the same thing with each of the other positions as well. Um, so again, we get a list of players uh, that we might potentially want to look at. Um, and again, for left back, we just set up the scouting priority for them as well. And then that's your recruitment meeting done. We're now off to a training camp. We've got two days left of our first week. We're just auto-selecting our training camp squad. We're all off to Spain to have a jolly good time and we're going to play Sevilla while we're there. Lovely stuff. And in the background, with us, without us being involved at all, we've signed a goalkeeping coach as well. Didn't even know it was happening because we allocated it to the backroom staff. Um, we'll ask him to recommend a signing and now we never need to worry about him again because we're not controlling our own staff at the moment. Again, if you want to, you can. At the start, I would recommend you don't. And the game is now auto saving, so I've got my game set up to save once a week. I would recommend you do the same. Um, and Johnson Clark Harris has picked up an injury. Not ideal. We've got two more days left of our first week. I don't think there's anything else significant that happens now. I think you get most of the induction stuff um, within the first week, he says. But then you get another one. And first, we've got all the uh, data hub stuff again. And now we've got an induction to the squad. Um, so again, make sure you take the induction. You've got to go through all of these because they are super, super helpful. I mean, it does give you a nice summary of who your, your better players are, who your higher potential players are, that kind of thing. Um, so do all of the inductions. I can't emphasize that enough. The game helps you if you accept the help. I know it's often instinct as gamers to skip all of these tutorial things because we think we're clever. This is a very complex game. Go through the inductions. You've now got one for the development centre. We touched on it briefly before when I showed you the youth teams. This will explain how the development centre works. All of these tabs have a tutorial. Like I say, the data hub one will be much later in the game, but all of the rest of them you're going to get pretty much in this first week. And it shows you how to use everything. And you won't necessarily take every piece of information out of every one of them, but you can go back and redo them. You can learn as you go. You're getting your staff to do a lot of the background stuff as well. And eventually, you'll start to get an idea for which parts of the game you want to be involved in. I hold my hands up and say, I never do my own training. It just doesn't interest me. That, <laughs> just boring as far as I'm concerned. Some people love it. I'm not interested. So I've been playing the game for 25 years and still delegate my training to my backroom staff. That's the great thing about that staff responsibilities tab, you can do as little or as much of the game as you possibly can. For me, 
I like to focus on the tactics and the transfers and kind of let everything else take care of itself. You might want to do training and media. It's fine. You can do that. It gives you the option to set it up that way. But that first week, as long as you do all the inductions and as long as you go through everything kind of systematically, deciding how you want to be doing it, getting your system set up, you should find yourself at the end of that first week with a rough idea of who's good and who's not in your squad, a tactic that is set up and being trained, training that is up and running, and you'll have an idea of what transfers you want to bring in as well. You'll be doing some scouting. And that, after just seven days in the job, is a pretty good place to get to. Obviously, there's way more that we can look at that will be separate videos a little bit further down the line. Um, but if you follow that as a first week, you're not going to go too far wrong early on at least. If you've enjoyed that video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.